Hey, this week we brought you a story about water safety. Our series continues today with a closer look at the national lifeguard shortage. It's having a huge impact on our city's beaches and pools. CBS 2's Hannah Klieger shows us how some groups are getting creative with exploring solutions. New York City only has about a third of the approximately 1,400 lifeguards needed to keep swimmers safe this summer, according to Parks Department officials. We have seen a significant challenge that is not unique to New York. Henry Garrido, executive director of DC 37, the union which represents lifeguards, says this could lead to decreased access to safe swimming citywide. People are going to take a risk and they're going to swim in areas that may be closed well, you have that sign that says no lifeguard on duty. Leaders at YMCA of Greater New York say they're feeling it too. In response, YMCA started providing a free lifeguard course, which allows for expedited training and throws in some additional perks. They get a stipend, and when they are finished, it's a national certification, so they can work anywhere in the country. If they choose to work for the YMCA, we have a sign-on bonus. Fewer lifeguards means fewer opportunities for pools and other places to be open, which in turn meant fewer people learning to swim, which in turn meant fewer lifeguards. Meanwhile, a Brooklyn teacher is trying to break that cycle. I had a near-death experience drowning at the beach. I had fear of the water. Marvin Carbajal is the swimming coach at the Bushwick campus, which houses four public high schools. He's also an alum who learned to swim in this very pool before he joined the swim team in the early 90s. Decades later, as a PE teacher, he brought the sport back to the students. Fear of the water is generational, so people, you know, instill fear in their children not to go near the water and never learn how to swim. 20 years ago, this school was considered a lifeguard factory, responsible for producing so many of the lifeguards that worked in our city's beaches and pools. With the return of these swimming teams, Mr. Carbajal, who was a lifeguard himself for 10 years, says he's hoping to bring that legacy back, too. Brian Marchand didn't know how to swim last school year. Now the 18-year-old is on the team and weeks away from finishing his lifeguard training through the parks department. It's really cool. Like. I'm proud of myself for like, accomplishing that. So is Karen Valencia, who's hoping to pass the test and begin working as soon as she turns 16. That's a great opportunity, and you don't know if that can open the do doors for you on, like, on the future. It's opening for me the doors right now. As advocates are sounding the alarm over a troubling trend. Nationwide, uh, since the pandemic ended, our drowning rates are on the increase. Right now, we're actually seeing drowning rates that we saw in the late 1990s. So it's really taken us back about 20 years in this country. City leaders are scouring for solutions before the summer's dog days set in and thousands flock to the nearest water. In Coney Island, Brooklyn, Hannah Klieger, CBS 2 News. Tomorrow we'll wrap up our series on water safety. The family behind the supermarket chain Stu Letters has been on a mission to save lives ever since their little boy Stewie drowned in 1989. Now they're expanding that mission in a big way. We'll show you how. That's tomorrow on CBS News at 6 a.m.